next is we're at a hotel. There's bedrooms, there's beds. There could be some nookie going on tonight, but there will be some rooms where nookie's not going to work so well because of a male problem called erectile dysfunction. Everybody know what nookie is? Do I have to go any further than that? I got, I got props. I can do things. Okay, you guys are good. You're a good crowd, I tell you. Let's give it up. But it is sad case. A man will start to have some issues. Go to the primary care doc. Go to even the urologist. Here's a prescription, Viagra, Levitra, Cialis, without the question. Hmm, you know, this will take care of it for a while, but maybe there's a problem with your circulation. Maybe we should check your cholesterol, your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your health, your fitness, your diet, your sleep, your stress. Maybe we should actually look at your heart to see if this is a clue, because in the medical literature, very well described, erectile dysfunction is three to four years before a heart attack. It's an opportunity to find out the truth before there's tragedy. That's what the canary in the coal mine is. Miners 100 years ago didn't want to die of carbon monoxide poisoning, odorless, tasteless. They would bring a bird in a cage. If the bird stopped chirping, the bird was getting poisoned. They would run out of the mine and avoid carbon monoxide. It's an early warning system. So no, you don't have to put a bird in a cage in your bedroom. If it stops chirping, you have a vascular problem. You need to get serious about this problem because there are other causes, testosterone, thyroid, emotional, and the rest, nerve. Uh, you're for a long distance biker, you might have injured some nerves down there. But nonetheless, it's very commonly vascular and all. And finally, this is the precise way, and I'm gonna get back to food in a minute, that you can determine anybody nowadays, technology moves forward, maybe 20 years ago, an executive physical or a routine visit to your internist was, how do you feel? Let me listen to your heart. Let's get some routine labs. I'll see you next year, Joe and Jane. It's simply not adequate anymore. It's not grandpa's you know, Oldsmobile anymore because there is no Oldsmobile. So we're gonna return right now to the topic of prevention and then detection. Because we were talking before, Blue Zones and Harvard were talking about overall longevity. If you don't wanna have a heart attack, oh, it's the same list pretty much as Harvard had for longevity. This is from large studies around the world. Don't smoke, move your body, eat all those things in the produce department, the farmer's market, your personal garden, not the meat counter, not the fish counter, not the poultry counter. God knows not the candy and the processed food and the frozen food in the middle counter. Enjoy a few alcoholic beverages, but don't overdo it. And the new one on the list for heart disease specifically is sleep. A study in 2011 here, 2013, and a study just six weeks ago identified the new studies from Madrid that people that sleep less than six hours a night have an increased risk of silent worsening of arteries throughout the body. It might be that it goes along with other things. You sleep and you grab bad food and you don't go to the gym and you're stressed out and you gain weight, but it's an easy thing to measure. And people that sleep seven to eight hours a night have far less of this silent heart artery blockage. But let's detect the problem like a mammogram or a thermogram or a colonoscopy, which simply doesn't exist. Who would have ever predicted on outward appearance what your doctor is using, your nurse practitioner, your naturopath? That's who would have predicted Winston Churchill versus Jim Fix, a runner, an athlete, an author who dropped dead of a heart attack, and Winston Churchill who lived a good long life. So there's all kinds of tools. This is the last little bit of the cardiology talk. But... There is, I don't like CAT scans. I'm not a fan of radiation. I don't like flying because there's radiation, but there is. So take a handful of chlorella, right? Actually, chlorella right from Hippocrates. That's where my chlorella comes from, actually. I love chlorella. Actually, I eat chlorella. I actually like the flavor. I tell you how long I've been plant-based. I just let it melt in my mouth. Not too many do that. Um, I don't like giving people CAT scans. I fight it. I used to do nuclear stress tests on patients. I don't do that anymore. It's a huge amount of radiation. But there is a CAT scan that takes 10 seconds. It's a very low dose of radiation. No IV, no iodine injected, no exercise. If you've had bypass, a stent, a clogged artery defined somewhere, you don't need it. But if you're like most people, I see my doctor, he tells me everything's okay, but it doesn't need any but. But my cholesterol is a little borderline, or my blood pressure has been a little issue, or my blood sugar is a little bit high, or... My brother just had that bypass or my sister has a stent for about $75 in my city. Maybe you'll pay a hundred. 
you get a CAT scan, and the CAT scan can tell you in 10 seconds if you're A, B, or C. A, you've got young arteries that have no bone in your arteries. That's called hardening the arteries. Or maybe you're like C. You have no symptoms, but you've got horribly aged arteries that can be detected in 10 seconds. Coronary artery calcium scan. Sadly, you do need a doctor's prescription in most states, not every state. So I give out, doctor, I give out prescriptions for this like candy. Um, you need to ask your primary care doctor specialist for it if you want one. Uh, in the state of Texas, the data is so strong for this. If you are a citizen of the state of Texas, you get one of these free at age 50. One legislator who is highlighted in that movie called The Widowmaker Movie got a legislative uh, approval that everybody gets one as an insurance benefit, just to tell you the kind of strength there is scientifically for this. So I just hate reading. I have a little Google alert, heart attacks, and every morning, I'm telling you, there's 10, 15 stories around the United States of somebody who dropped dead, police chief, fireman, school teacher. You know, it's only somebody like that or a celebrity that's going to end up with a newspaper article. But it's 2,000 people a day in the United States dying of heart attacks, or a minimum, a thousand of them are completely unnecessary, sadly. And it's just tragic. I mean, I care. It's tragic. Get the darn CT scan. Eat your plants.